Once upon a time, in a region far beyond the cliff of the hideous mountain of an ancient village in the continent of Africa, there live Amara. No, I mean Grandma Amara. This lady is 76 years old. When you look at her, you might think she has many grandchildren. But you are wrong. She is a virgin and has never had an affair with a single man in her entire life. Believe me when I say this, Amara has never been married and doesn't have any kids. But what makes her story so interesting is that she never slept with any man since she was born. What made her remain a virgin all these years? It's hard to believe, but the mistake that got her here is one that many unmarried girls still make today. Amara is not married and has no children. Furthermore, she had never slept with any man. In short, she is still a virgin. One day, a young, beautiful girl called Oyinye went to deliver fruits Amara had asked her to help buy for her. Oyinye entered her house, called upon her to come and collect what she had sent her to buy, or per harp, where to leave it for her in her house. Oyinye could not get any response, and she all could hear was a faint voice from the back of the house. The voice was calling for help and assistance. Oyinya taught to herself. Does Mama Amara now have someone living with her? Because all she could remember was that all her whole life she had known Mama Amara, to always being alone. Oyinya rushed to the back of the house, and to her amazement, she saw Mama Amara on the floor. She had slipped and fell to the floor, and because of her age being old, she could not help herself to get up. Oyinya helped up and take her to the seat to sit down. Sorry, Ma. Sorry, Ma, Oyinya said as she helped her get some water to drink. Oyinya was displeased and unhappy as to why an old woman should be left to herself and nobody is living with her. Amara did not wake up one day and find herself alone, a virgin and without a husband or family of her own. Rather, she was raised like most other people when she was a little child. She was unique, though, in that she didn't socialize much with other people, particularly those of a different gender. When compared to other girls, this was unusual. Rather, she had a strong desire to become wealthy. She was quite fond of money and lovely things. No man would talk to her as a result. Most guys would come up to me and say they loved me, but I was always busy with many things. I didn't like making friends or getting close to men. Also, whenever a guy approached her, she would first look at him and try to figure out if he had a good future ahead. She would look at the man and think about whether if she started a relationship with him, would they become rich or stay poor? Those days she thought she was being really smart by thinking this way, but now she can see the results of those choices. In many African countries, there are different traditions. In some of these traditions, families help their children find husbands or wives. This was also true for Amara's family. However, she felt differently about this. She had her own special feelings and thoughts. Because of these feelings, she did not want her parents to choose a husband for her. She wanted to make her own choices. When Amara was younger in their family, they had a rule where you marry a man chosen by your parents. But she consistently informed her father that she had no interest in marrying a man they had chosen for her. She desired to fall in love independently with a man. She avoided the man her father wanted her to marry as a result, and she frequently skipped home. I would flee, and no one would ever know where I went if a man arrived at our house believing he was there to marry me. She had the mentality that age was irrelevant. She also believed that she would not be denied the opportunity to wed a wealthy man as long as she remained a virgin. She was growing older and the passage of time did not stop her from avoiding marriage. She started to understand that her behavior might be causing problems. So she started to become more open and let men talk to her. However, because she had always had strong beliefs, she still acted in ways that showed she hadn't completely changed. She still held on to her principles. I reached a point where I noticed that no guys were talking to me. She then became aware that something was wrong. She then started to acknowledge their emotions, but one problem remained with her. She became more interested in a man's appearance than in his financial status. She'd notice a guy's appearance when he came to see her, 
At times, he was either short and unattractive, or too tall and attractive. After speaking with an attractive man, she would always find something to be upset about. She behaved most times in a way that seemed like she was cursed never to get married. And when she walked on the street with a guy, she felt it didn't look right. She made a big mistake by trying to choose based on my own feelings. This also led to no one else coming to show interest in her anymore. After acting this way for a long time, she only gave one guy a chance. She says this experience made her think she should be more careful in choosing a partner. She believed that being picky was a smart way to avoid mistakes. I dated this guy once, but we didn't work out because he wasn't content with just being in a relationship. He desired intimacy with me, but I thought that was best left until marriage. I used to always create an excuse to go the restroom when a guy wanted to get personal when we were together. But I would immediately depart and call it quits on the relationship. It was moments like this that made her realize he was not the man for me. She did, however, also believe that these men's actions had an impact on who she is now. However, she is aware that she is mostly to blame for her own choices. Following all of these encounters, she came to the realization that not a single man had spoken to her in a long time. As a result of her previous deeds, she began to experience numerous unfavorable effects. She ultimately lived a life filled with regret, longing for the connections and chances she had refused for so long. It was too late to undo what had transpired by then. She regretted the decisions she had taken in the past and the opportunities she had passed up. I now hold myself accountable for everything that occurred, realizing that no one else is to blame. She said, I really regret how I acted in the past. If I hadn't run away from the men who wanted to marry me, my life could be different now. Nowadays, it seems impossible for a man to marry her, and finding someone who wants to date her feels like a dream. It feels like it's been 35 years since anyone told me they loved me. I don't actually have a husband, kids, or anything. Prior to later learning more about them, I knew very little about nuns. I made the decision to accept my circumstances and live without a husband, if they could. Her life is greatly impacted by it. She now finds social situations difficult. The things that people say to her and the way they treat her cause this difficulties. Because of this, she now finds social situations difficult and awkward. Those who lived close to her started to wonder why they hadn't seen her dating yet. A few advised her to simply disregard the rumors and let individuals to express themselves as they pleased. But they all started treating her badly. She couldn't get support from her family or anyone else. Her family had concluded that she would never get married, so they distanced themselves from her. She was left with no one to talk to, and they were all shocked by how things turned out. At that stage, they had nothing else to say except to blame her for everything that had happened. They thought that she was the reason for her own situation. She never got married or had kids after that, and no man ever showed her love after that. At home by herself, she looks after herself. She may have benefited much from having children in many ways, especially because by now she might have grandkids. She is now alone in her life. Her youthful aspiration of acquiring fortune did not materialize. It's possible that the men she turned away helped her realize her dreams. As she has gotten older, she doesn't have the strength to work. This makes it hard for her to earn a living, buy food, and afford other things she needs. Money has become a significant issue for her due to her lack of physical strength and resources. One important lesson I've learned is the value of respecting everyone. Umeint. I didn't fully appreciate this before, and that's a big reason why I'm living the way I am today. Now that she is older, she finds that no man wants to marry her. This situation has had a big impact on her life. She doesn't have anyone to support her or help her with her needs. If she had a husband, she would have a family like other people, and she believes this would have made me happier. Instead, she is living a life that is hard and unhappy a life that nobody would choose if they had the option. Lots of people in the world regret things they didn't do well, but it's a big problem that there are a lot of people in the world who regret their mistakes. However, 
It's a serious issue that some people continue to make the same mistakes as those who have already come to regret their decisions. There is a benefit to this, though. These are people with regrets, and we can learn from them. They can offer us guidance and instruct us in important ways. Positive behavioral and mental changes can be facilitated by following this guidance. I want to share some advice with my grandchildren out there in the world all over, especially the girls, because they might act in ways that could lead to a life like mine," Amara stated. Recall that you are not required to accept every person that comes into your life, but it's critical to show respect to each and every person. You might meet a man who loves you but isn't rich. Being with someone isn't all about their wealth. You can build a life together. Love is worth more than money. It serves as the cornerstone of a solid partnership. In my life, I was too arrogant and too afraid, which brought me to a situation where I'm not happy now. I hope you may learn from my mistakes and move forward with your life, but my time for changes is over. If you have learned any lesson from this story of Amara the Old Virgin, please share your thoughts in the comments section. To our returning viewers, we say thank you, and if you have not subscribed, please press the subscribe button to subscribe and also like and share with your friends and family. We all have something to learn from this. Thank you once again for watching. Bye for now.